you been thinking about getting the Chameleon Loop antenna, specifically the F Loop 3.0? Well, they have a new kit for this thing. So if you're an existing owner, you can add this kit onto it and make it that much better. Let me show you. So this product is a remote tuner. It's a remote manual tuner, which means you get to use this to tune your antenna. You already know that when you're tuning this antenna that you're holding on to it while you're giving it a tune. So the tune is a little bit off because once you let go, it actually changes a little bit. Not enough to prevent it from working, but it does. And having this remote tuner is going to let you put this antenna farther away from you. If you've got a balcony, you can put this antenna outside and tune it from the inside comfort of your home. If you're out camping like I typically am, and I want that antenna farther away from my camper, which it's got metal all around this thing, and it will influence the way the antenna is tuned. This means I can keep the antenna farther away from me, up to 20 feet with the provided cord, and tune this thing manually. So this kit, everything in the kit comes in this little box, which makes it a real simple installation. So what we get in this kit are the motor, the mounting bracket that goes on to the existing loop matching unit, a battery for the remote, and a few screws, and the Allen wrench that we're going to need to tighten this thing on to the box. So let me show you how easy this is to set up. They do provide this Allen wrench to tighten up all the set screws that you're going to need to do, but you are going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. And since I don't have one of my screwdrivers handy, this will do. Because the shaft that holds on the tuning knob doesn't have any kind of a notch on it, it's not really that important to have it in any specific location, other than if you start with a set screw on top, maybe it'll be easier to work with. So you're only going to remove the two screws at the end of the cover, the top part of the cover. We're not taking this cover off, just the two screws. The bracket is really straightforward. It's all pre-drilled. Everything's ready to go. These two holes line up with the top of the box and the two screw holes in the front are going to be what the motor attaches to. And you're going to use the two longer screws to secure that down. So you don't want to get carried away with this. Just using a screwdriver to hand tighten these down is all you're going to need. Lining the motor up is really easy. We're just going to take these two holes for the screws to screw into the plate itself and line that up with the notch here on the top. So that's going to be at the top of the unit. Like that. There's another part of this in the manual that talks about how to align this and how to tighten it down. And before I put this on, I wanted to show you. And that is there are two set screws in this motor area. This is the gap that you're going to need to get to. So when you rotate the motor, you're also going to get the other set screw, which is over here. We're going to rotate this thing later and get it onto the top. And that's how we're going to tighten this thing down. The motor fits nice and smoothly on top of this thing. You want to make sure that there's nothing impeding it and so the plastic housing for the motor is fitting flush with the bracket. And all that's left to do is to tighten it down. Before we move on, you want to make sure you look into this gap, this area here. Make sure that you can actually see the set screw because we want to tighten that next. This part's pretty easy. Once you get the battery in, you just use the power on switch at the top from off to on. And if you did it right, you're going to get a green blinking, intermittent blinking light. And on top of the unit is the power switch on and off, the remote motor cable, which we're going to hook up, and a couple of ports that aren't being used right now, the SWR and the serial. On the motor itself is the power cord plug-in. We'll plug in this side first, and the other side goes right into the controller. So in order to rotate the motor into the right spot for the next set screw, you're going to use the tune buttons to quickly find out where the other spot is, and then the jog button to get it incrementally until you can get it in just the right spot. You're going to use the up and down tune buttons to go clockwise and counterclockwise. A quick turn or two with the Allen wrench and you're dialed in. All right, now that I got the tuner hooked up and I got the antenna set up outside, we will be able to see when the signals increase, when they get louder, and that lets us know that we're on frequency. Romeo Papa, Ziba calling CQ Poda. Okay, I got an Alpha Fox Cut 6 Zulu State Tibet, an Alpha Fox Cut 6 Lima Papa. You are a 56 in the Kilo 2843 in Oregon. Over. You can tell how I can zero in this guy without even using my tuner from the radio. Now, using the manual loop tuner for transmitting is the same idea. You're going to use the tune up or tune down buttons along with the jog up or jog down to get that fine tuning. 
and once your SWR is as low as possible for where you're set up at, you're good to start transmitting. This is a heck of a lot nicer than using the hand wheel, even though that's not too inconvenient. So if you've got the ability to put your antenna outside on a porch or balcony or just out in the patio like I have, then this is going to make a huge difference because in the winter, I can stay warm doing it, or in the summer, I can be in the air conditioning. This opens up the operation of the loop to be a heck of a lot more fun, at least I think. As you can see, this manual tuner really speeds up the process of getting onto a frequency so you can start transmitting. Even though it was okay before with the knob, this is even better. It's fast, you can hear it, you can see it on your display, whether you have a waterfall or not. Something to keep in mind when you're using this tuner module is make sure you turn off the power switch because it will be on and that blinking light will consume your battery. So if you put this in storage, I can guarantee your battery will be dead when you go to use it, if you leave it on. Now, as far as I know, you can actually add to the power cord and you can extend the length of the power cord quite a distance. If you already own the F-Loop 3.0 antenna, then this manual remote tuner may be something you'd be interested in upgrading to. If you haven't purchased a loop before, then getting the loop with this, that's going to be a big deal to making this even more fun than it already is. There'll be a link in the description below for the F-Loop 3.0 antenna and the remote manual tuner. Make sure you use my codes to get 5% off your purchase at checkout. And a big thanks goes out to Chameleon Antenna for providing this tuner module so that I can make this video and show you how it operates. And before you go, you might want to check out this video right here.